Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca from Holy Rustic and I'm sitting here in our DIY studio which is currently closed because everybody's in quarantine. But we were shipping out uh, craft kits including this lemon door hanger that says Hello Spring. Um, so we're doing a tutorial so you can paint with us from home while everything is shut down. So I'm going to flip this down and we'll go ahead and get started. You have several paint colors, you have your door hanger. And some letters for Hello Spring and some ribbon. So we're gonna do this in steps. And the first thing that you need is just your yellow paint. So the regular yellow is what we're gonna use first. And this will take several layers because anytime you're putting yellow on wood, it takes a few layers to, to cover up the transparency of it. So I'm just gonna start painting that on. Um, you could always do a layer of white first if you wanted to kind of cover that wood up and then go back with the yellow. But either way, you're pretty much painting the same number of, of layers. So I just start with the yellow. And I'm using a big brush because we got a lot of area to cover here. These are um, laser cut door hangers, so they have that burned edge look. So you don't have to paint the edges. If you like that look, you can leave that black edge around it. If you don't, then you can cover it up. It's up to you. It's a matter of preference. All right, so there's coat one. You can always have a hair dryer close by if you want to dry in between coats to speed up the process. And um, I'm just gonna let it set a little bit and then I'm gonna go back over it with another coat of yellow. So this takes quite a bit of yellow. I decided I'm gonna paint my edges. I ain't gonna leave them. beautiful day outside and everything going on at least the sun's shining bright and giving some people stuff to do outside while social distancing of course <laughs> let me start my second my second coat here once we get a couple coats on it then we're gonna do one last one and while it's still wet we're gonna do some gold blending with your king's gold looks like lemons are gonna be super popular this spring and a lot of cute crafts that involve lemons I was in Walmart the other day, they had little lemon trees. They were super cute. Like, not real ones, artificial lemon trees. So they'd be cute in some home decor. I am going to go around my edges a little bit. Just while it's flat on the table, I'm just going to take my brush and hit the edges. And it does soak it up. So if you really want to cover that black, you have to do multiple coats. that dry and then do another one. So while it's drying I'll probably go ahead and work on the 
leaf at the top and the stem. So we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna come back and do another coat and then work with it while it's still wet. So I'm just gonna lay my brush down here and I'm gonna get out the green. So for the green, we want it to make a second color. So I'm gonna, or you can see my plate here. So I need some green just for the leaf. And then, well shoot. Luckily that is still wet, I'll just wipe it off and go back over it. Don't sling your paint like I just did. All right, um, and then I'm gonna mix a little bit. So I'm gonna get a little bit, just a little bit of green to do some accents with. So about a mm, quarter size of the green and then just a tiny little bit of black. So I'm just gonna do a drop. And I just use the end of a paintbrush to mix it up. Make sure you have several paint brushes and a cup of water handy. So I want a contrasting color and that's not quite contrasting enough for me. So I'm gonna do just another little drop of black. It's a little one. And then mix that up. I just want it to be a little darker than my original color. So that'll, that should be good. All right, so I'm gonna take another um, fairly big brush. I'm gonna dip in my lighter color and I'm gonna go ahead and cover that whole leaf with it. Like this. Now right here, you're gonna have a bow covering it so you don't have to be too careful with your edges between the lemon and the leaf, but you don't wanna go crazy either. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the edges while I'm here. Makes it look a little more complete, but again, you don't have to do that. It's more work for sure. All right, I'm gonna let that dry a second, and then I'm going to get a little brown to do the stem. So I have nutmeg brown. It doesn't really matter which brown you use. And just brush that brown onto the to the stem. Okay, and that might take a couple coats, depending on what brown you use. And it but brown is pretty light in color. All right, again, this would be a good time to have a hair dryer handy if you wanted to dry in between your coats. Do another coat of my light green here and then while it's still wet I'm gonna do a little um, blending with the other color that we made grab them edges real quick all right so while it's still wet what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip in this darker color I'm gonna take the same brush I'm just gonna dip in that darker color and then I'm gonna turn my brush sideways and I'm going to incorporate a line of that darker color to kind of follow the shape of the leaf and then go up the middle so right now it's really dark but what we want to do is blend that in so I'm gonna to lightly touch the brush to those dark marks and I'm gonna kind of smooth them out and blend them in to that leaf so we want to give it a little bit of a contrast but we don't want it to look super bold so I'm just barely touching my brush to the board and smoothing out those edges. So now we have a little bit of contrast and it just looks, I think it looks better. So 
Um, if you get it too dark, you can always go back over it with the lighter color and blend some of the light back into it. You can always put more dark on it if you want to. Just kind of go up in between and just lightly brush that, brush that in. I just think solid, completely solid colors tend to be boring. So we're gonna do the same thing on our lemon when we get there with the gold. So that just gives it a little bit. I just like the way that looks better. A little more detail. All right, and then I'm done with the green. So I'm gonna go back and do another coat of this brown because it's super light. Um, and it's better when you do a couple coats of it and go around the edges here. I'm going to flip this back around. So we're done with the top for now. We'll do some more highlighting when everything's finished. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in the water and now I'll go back to the yellow. So I need a bunch more yellow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of gold on my plate. So you have what's called King's Gold. And you're not going to need a lot of this. We're just doing some of the shading and blending like we did with the um, stem. Or the leaf, I'm sorry. So I'm going to do a quick all over coat again with the bright, or uh, with the yellow paint. And then while it's wet, I'm going to go through and incorporate that gold. Just going to do one more coat to make it a little bit darker. Such a messy painter. <laughs> so I have to wear an apron. edges just real quick again. Get some of the brush strokes out. All right, so while it's wet, what I'm gonna do, same thing as we did with the green, I'm gonna take my same brush, I'm gonna dip it in that gold, and then I'm going to use my brush sideways like this, and I'm going to do, follow the shape of the lemon. and just do several strokes through here. A little bolder than I want, so I'm gonna go back through and just lightly start blending, blending those in. So barely touch your brush to the, and you can, you can um, use it the full width of your brush again if you want. Just kind of smooth those out. get it too dark, you can always go back with the yellow, the original yellow. If you can't see the strokes, you can go back with the gold. Whoops. I didn't mean to go to the hurry. There we go. All right, so now we have some contrast on our lemon. We're going to let that dry. 
again, this is where I tend to not be able to stop and just keep going. So now I'm dipping in both my white, yellow, and my gold and just kind of in the um, areas where I can kind of see the wood, I'm just going over both of them real, real lightly. So we want this to completely dry before we start doing um, highlights and polka dots and all that. So while that's drying, we can flip over to our letters. Let's say you have your Hello Spring here. I'm just going to spread all this out. Make sure you have your little eye dot. Those are probably in the bottom of your supply bag in your kit. So just find you a brush and you're going to use black paint for this one. Well, it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever color you want. It kind of stands out the most and it covers the wood really, really good. So I'm just going to use some black paint and scoop this over a little bit. And then we'll fill that dry time with this. So we're going to go ahead and paint it black. The good thing about using the black is not only does it cover the wood with one coat usually, but you don't have to worry about those edges because sometimes those can be a pain if you're trying to paint the edges of the laser where the laser hit it. Just going to paint them and move them out of the way. Thank goodness for technology in times like this so we can all kind of stay connected and don't completely lose our minds. Change my hand. <laughs> I usually keep a whole roll of paper towels close but Apparently I forgot to grab them, so I'm just going to wear more paint than I'm using today. <laughs> Polka dots are probably the most tedious part of this project. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can do it. So those are covered pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and move them out of the way. You do need to have a, a glue gun that's plugged in. So we're going to use that here in a minute. Let's 
dry in, um, I'm going to work on the bow. And so you have several pieces, one of which is a burlap piece. Um, you're going to use the longer piece to make your base. And I've already attached this one, but basically you're going to fold it in half and then right where it meets, you don't have to. I like to use a stapler to staple each end so that it holds together. So one there and one here. And then you're going to kind of pinch it together in the middle. Now you have a small, you have two pieces of twine, one big piece for um, the back of your door hanger to hang it, and then you have a smaller piece and that's for you to wrap around your ribbon. So I have a piece of floral wire here, I'm just going to use that. Um, you also have some uh, ribbon, mine's a little different than yours, I have some polka dots. So I'm going to fold these just like I did the burlap, and I'm gonna staple on the back. You could hot glue if you wanted. I'm gonna do that with both of these bigger pieces. So they stay together, and then, um, then you have another smaller piece of ribbon and a really small piece of ribbon. So we're gonna go ahead and work with these. So I'm gonna here and put your staple side down, obviously, so you, you don't see it, but you're gonna kind of pinch these two pieces together like this. So you're doing a, a cross with them and laying them on top of that burlap. And you'll pinch that all together. Like that. Um, the back, this other piece of burlap, you're gonna fold in half. These are gonna be your tails. So they'll go, you'll pinch together in the middle here, and then you're gonna lay that. That'll be laid behind these other pieces. And then we also wanna put tails on the black ribbon. So I'm gonna fold that in half, and I'm gonna lay it underneath these pieces that are crisscrossed on top of the burlap. twist that around so you can see the polka dots. There we go. So you have all your pieces here like that, except the little tiny one. So I have these crisscrossed over top of the burlap. I have both my tails here. So I'm gonna lay it face down in my ribbon. You use your, I mean in my um, floral wire, you can use your twine. And I'm just gonna pull that tight and then twist it. So once I flip it back over, I'm going to straighten out these tails. <clears throat> Get everything <clears throat> back where I want it to be here. I'm going to fluff up my burlap. and make sure the wire is in the back of the bow. All right, so with this little piece, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue it in a round circle. So I'm gonna take this, get my hot glue gun, and I'm going to glue the back of it because the stapler is too big to fit in it. So I got my glue gun. Try not to burn myself here. I usually do. a little piece of glue and then roll that over and it's dry. Okay, so I have my, my circle. Now I want to put that in the center of my bow. And then um, you can trim up the edges of the burlap if you want. You can, if you want to do a little something fancy on the ends of your ribbon here, 
you can pinch fold it towards you and then take I use fabric scissors you can use regular scissors but if you fold it in half towards you and then at an angle cut that end off then you get these little edges here like that so I'll do that on the other one too fancier. I'm going to trim up this burlap because it's kind of coming apart at the ends. You can angle it if you want. Alright. So my bow is done. Once we get it painted, we'll attach that. To the lemon and we can trim it up some more if we need to um let's see how we're doing on dry time here so my lemon's still pretty wet so i'm going to flip this around and work on the leaf i'm going to do a little highlights um you can use paint pens for this i like to keep sharpie paint pens around um, makes it a little easier sometimes or you can just use a brush that's pretty rounded, a round brush, um, and then you can test it. So I just kind of load that brush up with paint, and then you can, you know, do lines, accent lines. You know, just press. You don't want to press down too hard, but um, so that's the goal here. I'm gonna start on my stem. I'm gonna do a little. Right here on the corner, I'm gonna go ahead and do a line here like that. And then I'm gonna go down here and do one straight down on each side of the stem. Okay. And then I'll come back with white in a little while. And we're gonna do the same thing on the leaf. So I'm just gonna kinda do some some borders with the black. I'm going to trace that edge around. I'm not worrying too much about down here because that bow is going to cover it up. Okay, so now I'm going to, in the middle, I'm going to do a squiggly line like that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get some white paint. We're gonna be doing polka dots as soon as that lemon dries. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some white paint out where you can get to it. It'll take quite a bit of white to do all the polka dots. And get another round brush. Do a little test here. Yep. And I'm gonna do a, just a little bit of white inside some of the black spots that I just did here and you don't have to think too hard about it it's not that planned just throw some accents on there so it'll give it a little bit of variation it's still pretty wet you don't want to drag it through wet black paint though so Don't think too hard about it. It's wherever you can't mess it up. Might do a little bit in the middle here. So I think I'm done with the leaf and the stem. Let's throw those brushes out for when we do the edges of our lemon. I should have plugged a dryer in. Um, so when we get to the polka dots, there's a couple different ways that we can do it. I want the polka dots for this door hanger to be pretty big. Um, I do have a big sponge brush that we can use. And I'll just show you. I'll go ahead while we're waiting on it to dry. I'll dip this, dip this in here. 
in my white paint. Just make sure the whole thing's covered. And kind of dab it and make sure. And then I'll do it right here. And you just kind of push down. That. So those are easy polka dots. And that's probably what I'll use. Um, another way that you can do it is use a paper towel or a toilet paper roll, some kind of round cardboard that's the size you want it to be. And then dip it into the paint, just the edge of it. And then you can put it straight down on your door hanger and you get an outline. After you get your outline, then you can go back in with a paintbrush and fill in the polka dot. And you want to do that before the outline starts to dry, otherwise it um, it's very obvious that there's a kind of a strange dry line around the polka dot. So, so two different ways to do the polka dots. Even when I use a sponge, I usually go back and kind of fill it in, do a second coat. It is faster to use the sponge, it's probably what I'll do today. But I do like using um, the cardboard too. All right, let's see. I have some areas that are dry on my lemon, so I'm gonna go ahead and start at the bottom. Now when we do this, um, we do wanna make sure we have some of the polka dots going off the lemon, just so it looks a little bit more realistic. But I'm going to start right in the center bottom. So I'm gonna dip this Sponge. And then I'm going to go right here and just go ahead and put a, well that didn't work, and put a circle like that. And while it's still wet, I'm just going to go back over and kind of smooth some of that out. These circles do not have to be perfect. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna kind of make a like a triangle in my mind as far as where to put the polka dots. So I'm gonna dip my sponge and then I'm gonna come out about right here. If you're using the paper towel roll, just make sure you're smoothing out those edges and filling in as you go. Okay. We're going to keep doing that until we get all of our polka dots on. We'll do another one about right here. This takes quite a bit of white paint. So from here I'll do, so I'm just imagining that triangle from each circle going up from the bottom. careful not to dip your palm in any of your wet paint and then spread it all over your door hanger. That's something else I'm notorious for. Like I said, this is probably the most tedious part of this door hanger. But polka dots are just so fun. And they look really good.
turkey. So I think I'm gonna go, while that's drying, I'm gonna do a little spot right here. And just kind of go halfway on the board there. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I can get to the side over here. Now I'm gonna need a half one here. And if you're using a paper towel roll or something like that, it's same process. And just more paint. Again, I'm just kind of imagining a triangle here and that's how I'm placing my polka dot. Cute. I'm just using a fat, a fat brush, a flat brush to smooth out those sponge marks. Almost done here. Get this edge right here. I'll do another edge right here. bug's going to be there so it doesn't really matter so I think I'll just use a brush to put a little hot circle 
circle there. There we go. All right, and I think I want some Ferenga right here, just a little bit. And the polka dots are done. It's looking cute. All right, so we just need to let that dry and then we are going to go back and do some highlights on the lemon and inside the polka dots. Um, and then the other thing that we need to do is attach our Hello Spring. So you can go back and look at these letters if there's any spots that you feel like need touched up. Now's the time to do that. Some white paint on it. Just feels like I got some burlap all over it. Alright. If you're gonna be hanging this outside, um as long as it's on, under like a covered area, a covered porch or something, it'll probably be okay. If it's gonna be in direct weather, I would find some kind of um, sealant to spray it with, like a outdoor lacquer or outdoor poly. Anything that seals it is gonna help preserve it when it's exposed to the elements. We use um, Revolution plywood for the door hangers, so it's supposed to be one of the better ones for the outside use. the edges as soon as it dries and do some of the same stuff that we did up at the top <laughs> the stem and the leaf I don't want to rush it though and mix all the paint and any of the polka dots that are um, already dry. I'm going to go ahead and take my brush that we used at the top and dip it in the black and I'm just going to do little half circle marks here. Not in the same place on every one, just kind of random and different. Follow the edge of the circle and kind of a little mark inside. There. Just for a light touch, get that little arch. a little more detail. Oh, one more. Okay, 
and then all we have left to do are the edges just like we said with the leaf so we can use the same brush dip in the back black paint or you can use your paint pen or sharpie marker if you got it um, and I'm just gonna kind of go down the side you can do straight lines you can do squiggly lines doesn't really matter do a little squiggly here Gonna kind of follow in between my dots. Whoops. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And it's all it's just paint, so you can always paint over it if you need to. And again, the bow is going to be up here, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. And I think I am done with the paint. Happy with that. I think it's cute. All right. Once it's dry, then all we have left to do is glue our letters and put our bow on. So I'll go ahead and get my bow out. twisted in the back and I'm just going to be laying it right on top of the lemon and I'm going to wrap it around the back and twist it or tie it depending on what you're using. If you're using the twine you're going to tie it. If you're using floral wire you just twist it. Okay. So I can kind of crinkle these up a little bit. Now, when you go to put your letters on, um, you want to, you have a little thing of E6000. So E6000 is a great craft glue, but it does not dry immediate, like, immediately like hot glue. So you want to be really careful um, about moving your door hanger after you get these letters on. I usually leave them flat for about um, at least 12 hours before I hold them upright. So you're just going to leave it flat, let it dry, and then tomorrow you can come back to it and... Um, hang it if you want um, but when you put your glue on the back of these letters a little goes a long way so you're gonna squeeze it in the thickest parts of your letter you just barely squeeze it and touch it to the back of your letter so you don't want to get glue too close to the edge because once you push that down this E6000 will ooze up out of the sides of your letters and then you will see it on your door hanger so you don't want to do that just put a little bit in these thick parts of the letters the very thickest parts um, and then you're going to lay them flat so once you get them on I mean when you drop them on there you want to make sure that it's pretty much where you want it to be because you don't want to have to slide your letters around and um, because that'll leave some marks on your board so you want to kind of lay it out before you put the glue on it make sure you know about where it's going and then pick up I'm not gonna lay this flat because it's still wet but you're gonna pick it up one piece at a time put the glue in the center away from the edges little goes a long way and then you'll just flip it back over and drop it and then you're gonna leave it lay flat for several hours at least before you um, hang it hang it up so since mine's still wet and I don't have any 6,000, I'm gonna go ahead and end this tutorial. But make sure that you um, post your finished projects in our craft crew on Facebook, because we would love to see them. And here's our cute little drawer hanger lemon.